Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, a far more powerful, far more pervasive, um, far more present uh, in the investment management and banking and financial services world in general than they ever are in the US. And the simple reason, and again, I don't really have to uh, explain this in Africa, the simple reason is that China has a huge financial inclusion problem. It doesn't have great bricks, bricks and mortar financial services businesses. And so technology is supported by government. It's supported by government policy as a tool to enable financial services industries to get out there and include a greater percentage of the population in the real economy. And uh, you know, when you think about things like M-Pesa, for instance, in, uh, in uh, Kenya, uh, or Belkash in Ethiopia, some of the projects that I've seen around Africa, you can see that um, that's, I'm sure, very much um, something that would be relevant here uh, in Africa as well, that technology is a way of improving financial inclusion. So we built uh, a little equation in some work that we did, another piece of work which you can download from our website, which is this uh, future state of the investment profession that we did last year. Built a very simple equation that how do you create this trust? Uh, and we believe you create trust through two uh, um, uh, artifacts, really, credibility and professionalism. And I just want to dig in a little bit to those two things. So what makes up credibility? We think two things, credentials, and obviously I would say that. We offer, I think, the foremost uh, financial services credential in the world, but credential, I think, is important. Again, this comes out of the trust survey, surveying people around this, not surprisingly, a slight difference between retail and institutional clients. But credentialing is an important part of building credibility. So I'm always overwhelmed here in Nigeria by the support that the CFA exam has from all of your businesses, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, and it is, just to reinforce, if you didn't know already, it is an absolutely vital component of building trust in your work. So credentialing is important. Track record, um, I, I find this one a, a very interesting um, uh, question to have asked. Uh, because the question we asked, as I said, is, is uh, do you believe that credibility is around a targeted benchmark? And I, I, I would, um, for next time we do this survey, I think I'll sort of reconstruct that question a little bit. Because I think benchmarking is probably the one thing that this industry has done uh, a real disservice to itself through. Um, because when you think about benchmarking, effectively 50% of everybody in your industry is doomed to fail. And so um, our propensity to promote benchmarking, our propensity to talk about performance in a benchmark concept, context, I think is, is an extremely worrying one and um, a cul-de-sac down which the industry has driven for far too long. We need to talk about what we really do for a living, which is try and achieve solutions, investment solutions for people. At the end of the day, you don't care whether I've outperformed a benchmark or not. You care whether your retirement pot is big enough to retire on. And benchmarking, if we continue to talk about benchmarking, as I say, we're condemning 50% of our industry to failure. And again, doctors don't do that. Other professionals don't do that. Everybody has uh, the opportunity to succeed. Uh, and the industry succeeds, the profession succeeds, because all components of the profession are succeeding. So I think we need to change the way that we talk about our profession, stop selling benchmark performance on a competitive basis, and talk much more about the solutions that we provide for clients. Codes of conduct, uh, another very important aspect of building credentialing. Uh, again, not surprising that institutional investors think um, slightly more about codes of conduct than uh, anything else. Um, the reason I bring them out is we have Lelani Hall. Lani, would you just wave here? Lani, Lani is uh, responsible for our two codes of conduct that we promote here in Nigeria, global investment performance standards and the asset management.